Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. I'm going to give it a couple minutes just to allow people to hop on. Um, I see our numbers rising, so I just want to take a second. Um, but welcome. Uh, welcome to the ABA section of Civil Rights and Social Justice CRSJ 101 membership event, um, focusing on our reproductive rights initiative. Um, so we can tell you everything that we are doing post Dobbs um, and to support um, this work. Um, I'm here today with Allie Kielsgaard, the Associate Director of the section, as well as Melissa Hodak, who is the managing editor of our award-winning human rights magazine, um, where we have covered a number of issues related um, to reproductive rights and reproductive justice. Um, and I am so thrilled to also be joined by my friend and the CRSJ council member, Araceli Munoz, um, who is gonna talk to us um, a little bit about this work. And so I'm gonna turn it over to you, Araceli. Thank you for that wonderful introduction, Paula. Uh, as Paula mentioned, my name is Araceli Munoz. She, her, hers, ella are my pronouns. And I'm so excited to be here with all of you to talk about the, count, uh, the section. And I'm so proud to serve as a council member and also chair our reproductive rights initiative. Uh, so with that, let's jump right in. Ali, next slide, please. Great. So CSRJ is, was created in 1966. It's one of the younger sections of the ABA, if you can believe it. Um, and we have a great cohort of not only council members, but a very strong executive committee who, like me and the staff, is very dedicated to civil rights and social justice in our country and abroad. And so there on your screen, you see our current chair, Robert Rungi, as well as our chair-elect Lacey and other key members of our executive committee. Next slide. Our section has a very robust um, cohort of committees, as you will see here. And because there are so many and because they're so active, we are divided into divisions so that we can get the support and work that we need to get done. And so on the screen, you'll see five different divisions that groups together different substantive committees of the section. And we hope that you consider working on any of these or becoming a member of these. They all host regular meetings, have regular programming, and a lot of the policy work that we're gonna be talking about in a, in a moment comes from these divisions and the committees in these divisions. So with that, next slide, please. So today I'm gonna to talk to you about one of our newer initiatives. Um, it is not a substantive committee of the section, but rather an initiative, and it's the Reproductive Rights Initiative. And this initiative was born out of the decision from the Dobbs case, which happened two years ago. Um, and it was really meant to support lawyers wanting to understand, learn, be involved, be active in reproductive rights and in safeguarding these critical rights, and also to support the association in doing this work. Um, so this initiative was started, and we have an advisory group or a committee that oversees this work. It's filled with technical experts from all our various sections, uh, as well as some of our external bar partners, whether it's a specialty bar like NACDL or some of our affinity bars. And so again, this is coming together as the bar community to really see how we can promote reproductive rights in a post Dobbs universe or context. Um, next slide, please. So again, this was an initiative that was also done in partnership, not only with the Standing Committee on Pro Bono, but other entities within the association. And we have strong partnership, not only from Pro Bono, but also from Courage, and also from um, the Standing Committee on Sexual and Domestic Violence. So those are just some of the partners we work with um, side by side on this initiative. And what you'll see with a lot of the work of the section is we do work collaboratively across many, subst many substantive sections. So although we do a lot of work around health law through reproductive rights, we still work very closely with our friends in the health law section. For this initiative in particular, we have a lot of interesting uh, work up ahead. One is our In Conversation series, which we're going to kick off in the coming weeks, and we'll be featuring leading lawyers and reproductive justice partners 
who will be discussing some timely issues uh, and emerging issues coming, such as the pending SCOTUS decisions in both the FDA case and the EMTALA case, as well as new litigation, such as uh, midwifery litigation for access around maternal health care, criminalization of pregnancy outcomes, assisted reproduction, and personhood. I know after the Kentucky decision, a lot of people perked up and really requested more about this important topic. Next slide. So in addition to all the programming, as I mentioned earlier, we also work closely as an association to promote some of the values under our goals. And because of that, we do a lot of advocacy work or support the ADA in its advocacy work. So in particular, we've provided technical assistance and guidance on amicus briefs that the ADA has sought to submit in some key reproductive health cases. The ADA did submit a amicus brief in the Texas case, and this was the SBA Texas case, as well as Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health. We've also pr provided technical support on comments related to reproductive health care privacy under HIPAA. And we presented, we do present robust programming in person and virtual. I mentioned a moment ago some of our virtual programming, but we also last year at the annual meeting did an in-person program where we featured our reproductive justice partner, Sister Reach, abortion on our, ter in our, on our terms, as well as the Office of the Attorney General of Colorado, who's been a real ally in protecting and safeguarding reproductive health in the state of Colorado. Um, we also um, have been active in putting forth key resolutions. These past two meetings that we've had, we had Resolutions 511 in support of the Women's Health Protection Act or similar legislation, 509, focusing on the FDA's decision-making authority, 508 in support of EMTALA and access to emergency care. And at the upcoming meeting, we are putting forth two key resolutions, one on uh, one addressing uh, maternal health, and that's resolution 505. And we provided technical feedback on resolution 510 addressing Comstock. And again, this is Comstock as it intersects with the FDA litigation. Next slide, please. So we also have other projects and initiatives. As you will see, we are a very active section. And for that, I'm gonna turn it over to some of our staff who help lead those pieces of work as well. Paula, Ali, I don't know which one of you wants to jump right in. Sure, so I'd love to talk a little bit about um, one of our um, premier initiatives, uh, CRSJ's Chair Chat. Um, we started this during um, Section Chair Juan Thomas's year, um, and I have continued it throughout our current Section Chair's year, uh, Robin Rangi, and we host um, conversations on the latest civil rights topics um, in an uh, informal conversational interview. Um, we have a few that are um, related to the rights of women that I, I believe Paula will be pasting into the chat, um, but it's a really great way to um, have a conversation uh, on the latest topics. Um, and also recently, um, in March of 2023, we held our Economic Justice Summit um, in Washington, D.C., um, and we have an ongoing initiative um, to help um, election protection efforts called Perfecting Democracy. In addition to two other projects that are listed there on the slide. Great. Do we want to go to the next slide? And so as RSLA mentioned, um, we have a really robust um, platform for programming. Um, most of our programs are virtual, but as she mentioned, we do in-person panels as well. You'll see one of them listed in the chat. It was during our annual meeting last year. Um, and um, we love for our members to bring us ideas for new programs. Um, we can get these up really quickly um, so we can get information education out on these important topics. As you can see, there are a wide range of issues that we cover, including um, reproductive health. So um, we hope our members will come to us with any future issues that they'd like to host a webinar on. And if anyone um, that's joined us today has any questions, you can feel free to put them into the Q&A um, so that we can answer them for you while we're live. Um, or if that doesn't work for you, you can put them into the chat, but we hope the Q&A does work for you. Um, and now I will um, turn it over to our managing editor of our Human Rights Magazine, Melissa. Thanks, Paula. 
Um, so I'm Melissa Hodak. I'm the editor of Human Rights Magazine, which is a leading member benefit of the Civil Rights and Social Justice section. And we're currently entering our 50th volume year. So the magazine has been around just about as long as the section. Um, you can see some of our latest um, covers presented here. And um, our issues are currently available in print and online. Um, to plan the issues, I work with a team of editorial board members. They're all section members as well. Um, we have 11 on the board currently and um, a chair. Um, the, and the themes often tie into the work of the committees. Um, so oftentimes I will team up with uh, civil rights and social justice um, section committee um, to plan entire issues. And those tend to be some of our, our best issues. Um, we've recently done issues in addition to these on wealth disparities, free speech, um, voting rights, immigration. Um, so there's a lot of ways to get involved in the magazine. Um, you can reach out to me and um, suggest an issue theme, article ideas, or you can even join an editorial board meeting where you can listen in and hear how we go about planning issues. Um, they're very exciting and inspiring meetings. So I invite anyone who's interested um, to reach out to me. Thank you. And I just want to flag that um, Paula has pasted in the link to an article um, from a recent issue, one year later, Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health Organization in Global Context. And these were written by our Sally's colleagues. Yeah, and, and we do try to, I mean, <clears throat> it does focus much on what is happening in today's world, but even when they don't, and the topic doesn't directly relate to reproductive rights or women's rights, there are always articles included within the magazines that focus on these issues. So we have an upcoming pro, uh, issue that's going to be devoted to um, marginalized communities within marginalized communities. And we're going to take a look um, at different subsections of people who are being impacted and their reproductive rights or their birthing rights that are going to be impacted. There's just a number of things, including in our disability issue that's going to be forthcoming as well. Um, so um, it's one of our favorite, favorite activities within the section. If, if anyone is interested in getting involved, um, I'm going to put my email um, into the chat so that you can reach out and we can connect you with whatever you may need. Um, next slide. Um, as you can see here, there are tons of different ways to get involved. And if you are interested in, you know, in, in getting involved in any way, and I think everybody is here because they are passionate about and want to learn about what we're doing with reproductive rights, um, these are just some of the ways um, that you can get involved. Um, we always are interested in your ideas um, and the projects that you are working on. We love to partner with other organizations and support their work and potentially collaborate in some ways. Um, I would, again, encourage you to reach out to me um, and I can connect you with the right um, people or, or um, avenues to go about this. Um, but I think too, Araceli, is there anything else that you want to add about our work and how and we get involved? I did just want to say that one great way to get involved um, is to join our, our Rights of Women's Committee. Um, that is a feeder and we can we regularly collaborate with them um, and it is open to all members of the section. And it does reproductive rights um, and reproductive justice generally, but it also is on a wide range of issues that um, are of interest. Yeah. Arisely, I'll turn it over. Yeah, I mean, I'll just add a lot of the work, even of our reproductive rights initiative, we do a lot of cross collaboration with different committees, because as Paula noted from an upcoming human rights magazine issue, you know, reproductive rights is is an intersectional issue that affects so many communities and it affects them in different ways. And so birthing people come in all shapes, sizes, colors, ethnicities, economic situations, and so forth. So we collaborate across the different committees, both 
substantively as well as racially and ethnically. And I think that the section is for many of us a passion. Um, it's an outlet. It's a way to connect with similarly minded folks. Some of us are in the movement, not everyone is. And so it really creates an opportunity to come together and coalesce around really critical issues that we're passionate and committed about. So I think that this is a place that you could probably find a home and an outlet for something that you're passionate about. And if you're not, I think you could see we have great staff that are willing and interested in working with you to help you find a home here. Um, and I think we're always open to ideas and always finding a place for these ideas to be nurtured and to live. I know I have found it personally fulfilling and professionally fulfilling. So Araceli, do you want to tell us a little bit about how you got involved in the section and what your experience has been? Yeah, so I have been involved with the section. I've been involved with the ABA for a really long time. <laughs> More than I care to admit on this call. <laughs> as both a member and I used to work at the ABA. So I am biased in that respect. I see the power of the association. I see the power of the staff and the members. And you know we can all spend our time in different ways and in different places. And this is a great place to spend your time and to give some of your time to. And so I think for me, I've been in different on different entities. I've served in leadership with the Commission on Women. I've served you know, on the ABA's governmental affairs side and so forth. But for me, this section is home in part because I've always done human civil rights work, even when I was in the private bar or private sector, rather. Um, this has always been a passion for me. So I think that that's what brought me to become more deeply involved with the section. I think you know, you can't be in leadership or active in every single entity you're involved with at the ABA. So sometimes you're passive in others and sometimes you're active and then sometimes you're passive and then you go on to be active. And I think that's the great part of being a member of the association, but also of this section. You can pick your own adventure, but you can also come in and out as opportunities happen or as life happens. So I think you know, I'm sure I could be MIA for a year because I've gone off to do something, but I know when I come back. Um, I will still be coming home and everyone will still be there working hard and ready to have me join the ranks again. So I think that's that's the beauty of the section in particular. Um, and there have been times where I've been more or less active in the section. Um, for us, so if there aren't any other questions, um, I just wanna thank Araceli for joining us and talking a little bit about our project. And we're so grateful for your leadership in this field. Um, and we're grateful to all of our partners that work with the Reproductive Rights <clears throat> Initiative, as well as in our other sections that we can collaborate with throughout the ABA. Um, thank you all for coming today. Please don't hesitate um, to reach out to us. The recording will be made available. Um, we'll also be posting it on our website. Um, and so we'll circulate them, but thank you again so much for being here and feel free to reach out again if you have any questions. Have a wonderful day.